And now for the Monero development segment. All right. Hey. <laughs> and how's, how's it going, man? Awesome. I really feel uh, the vibe from your conference. It reminds me of uh, the Mor MoneroCon of last year. Yes. So it's definitely similar vibe. Although uh, I think we had beers in our hands during that one, which was, which was nice. And good beers, yeah. by the way. <laughs> um, what's going on, man? Yeah, what, what do you got for us this week? Yeah, so this time we have much more ongoing. So, I mean, last time, two weeks ago, there wasn't the spam attack. I, I call it like spam attack because I don't see any valid reasons uh, for organic growth in this. But yeah, um, we have lots of dev updates this time. So I'm going to share my screen now. And let's see, right here, we have a new release of the Monero software. So it's been more than 150 days since the last release. And now we have the official point two release and lots of things have changed. So let's have a look at this. So first we have risk five support. Risk five is a processor architecture, just like our ARM or um, Intel or AMD processors use X64. Uh, so this one is open source and you don't have to pay license licensing fees to use this processor architecture, but it's really a niche. It's still a niche, but it's nice to see that Monero supports this architecture as well. Then the daemon has received some bug fixes, which is, which is really nice. And they disable ports on the I2P, which is a network protocol uh, for anonymity. I haven't used it, but I think it's uh, really uh, interesting. It's an alternative to the Tor network. Then there was a bug fix that caused transactions to remain in the transaction pool. And I think uh, this one is related to the high fees, uh, the high transactions we are currently seeing and we saw a really large uh, TX pool in Monero. We haven't seen it this big, this large um, before, but uh, if you are watching the transaction pool right now, it's uh, it looks much better. And um, they fixed a slow RPC call um, for uh, some edge cases, so that's good as well. And for the wallet, they fixed uh, the set priority that is get getting ignored during transfers. I'm not sure if this is related somehow to this uh, fix, because the uh, if you wanted to do a Monero transaction with the fees set to auto, it uh, didn't set the higher fee if the TX pool was uh, large, but they fixed this and now the TX pool is cleared. So not sure which one of these was this fix, but yeah, now you can just uh, use the auto setting in the Monero wallet again, and it will make sure your transaction will get mind quickly. Uh, yes, and we see some updates to OpenSSL and RandomX. So RandomX had a bug that could lead to crashes uh, on macOS um, with the new processors. So 
So the next update is for the GUI wallet. And this has all the updates you saw from here because the Monero CLI is integrated in the GUI wallet, but they have added support for the Trezor wallet save three. I guess that's a hardware wallet. I can't say anything about this, but yeah. And it fixed a crash on macOS, which uh, happened quite often in my experience. Uh, so this is nice. And they've updated the QT, which is the framework. I don't know how what's the correct wording, but I would call it a framework in which the GUI is written. And they updated P2Pool, which is integrated into uh, the GUI um, to version 3.10, which is the latest version. So we even can look at the repository and I can see there is even a newer tag created, the point three tag. Uh, it's not officially officially released yet, but uh, expect a new release with the point three version soon. So after those updates, Feather Wallet has received two updates and the latest version is 2.6.5. And in the meantime, we saw they also fixed the fee adjustment. So even with Feather Wallet, you can now use, um, I, I think you cannot set the fee manually in the wallet, Feather Wallet, but it's always automatic and it's always choosing the correct fee right now. And I think this is funny. On the Windows version, they mitigated a false positive antivirus detection because they embedded the word kryptonite and Windows always gets crazy when it reads words like kryptonite or random X because it thinks it's a malware which is mining Monero. So, and they updated the integrated Tor client to the latest version, which is really nice. I really like that they always are really up to date or even ahead of the official releases. Um, I'm a big fan of Feather Wallet. I would always uh, use Feather Wallet instead of the official GUI because I always had some weird issues with the GUI. Yes, um, they are now allow restoring the legacy seeds that they call, um, I think they call legacy seeds uh, the 25 word seeds from the official Monero wallet because Feather wallet uses poly seeds or uh, shorter seeds. And you can even uh, now restore seeds if you are missing the 25th uh, checksum word, which is uh, a nice addition. And what I really like, they added the option to remove failed transactions. This was driving me crazy. Sometimes I had a transaction that has failed to broadcast to the network for whatever reason, but then it was stuck in the wallet and um, it was danger dangerous because if you right click on it, you could always um, rebroadcast that transaction. And this is a problem because uh, it failed. And then I did uh, another transaction and the, the other person received already the Monero but if I would uh, click on that uh, failed transaction and rebroadcast it, they would get it twice. So finally I could delete uh, the failed transaction from the wallet and I don't get into that risk anymore. 
So another update came out 16 minutes ago. So Anamero is a wallet for Android. It's uh, very minimal and it uh, goes in the direction of a hardware wallet with uh, two parts. It's, uh, it has two different apps. It has Anon and Nero for the yeah. app. Anon Nero is like an offline wallet, which uh, one part is like the online part and the other part is the offline part where you uh, can sign transactions. Yes, and they released a new version and it updates to version point three. So they are also uh, ahead of the time. So now we're com coming to a repository. It's called uh, Monero Echo System. And the problem is it's no longer, longer maintained. So all repositories inside here got arch archived um, just a few days ago. And uh, this organization was run by Eric. I, I don't know how to pronounce his name. I, I'll just call him Eric. And I saw he has closed this whole project because uh, he doesn't have uh, enough time. He already announced it uh, three years ago. And I don't think he found someone to um, take care of the project now. And yeah, every repository gets archived and everybody who has had his project into this uh, organization now has to move it back to his personal account. So it was really nice. It was in, it, there were different repositories inside this. Um, mainly uh, like Monero clients for different um, programming languages like for Python and uh, TypeScript, but also the uh, Monero outreach docs were inside here, a guide uh, for the GUI wallet and yeah, some projects here. I hope to see they are still active uh, in another place, yeah. I mean, it's still public. You can still uh, look in this, but yeah, they won't get any updates. Sad to see, but yeah, that's how it is. So my friend Alex, called Alex Anako on X, he's a software developer and he has created something new it's called XMR T3 Starter. It's a starter project uh, which you can use to create your own Monero web application. And it uses a really modern technology stack like um, Next.js and the T3 stack with uh, Tailwind, CSS, Shed, CNUI, and TRPC and the TypeScript library Monero TypeScript. And you can easily start, like clone this project and use it for your own um, project like TipXMR, which is our project, which, which is based on uh, the same tech stack. So yeah, you can look at the tech stack here. Um, software developers, they likely know most of these um, technologies. So really nice to see here the Monero Studio. Um, have an eye on this uh, project. Um, I think there might come more projects soon. So another thing is BISC2. Like um, this is a decentralized exchange and we saw it a long time in version one and now they released uh, the second version, which is the successor of BISC, 
one. And let me show you what they changed. I think they changed quite a lot. So with BISC1, you had to deposit some Bitcoin um, to trade. But now they introduce BISC Easy, which is a trading protocol, which doesn't use any security deposits. Um, and this is quite nice because you always had to have already you already had to have bitcoin in order to use bisc and this is bad for beginners who want to start with decentralized exchanges and don't have uh, any bitcoin yet and they want to add more trading protocols like multisig or swaps between lightning bitcoin and mainnet bitcoin for liquid BTC and they have their own protocol called BISC Lightning, which is between fiat. I don't know how this should work, but the most interesting is they want to support Monero swaps. So cross-chain atomic swaps between Bitcoin and Monero. But all of these things here are not ready yet. They only have their classic um, yeah, trading protocol between Bitcoin and Fiat and Monero. And yeah, let's have a look at the next. So this project is new. It's called XMR Haystack. You can use uh, this to uh, look which of your transactions are used uh, from on the blockchain with from other transactions like your outputs are going to be used as decoys or your one-time addresses that are on the blockchain are used as decoys and yeah i haven't tried it but um, you can connect a wallet and it will scan the blockchain and um, mark um, any of um, yeah, of your addresses that are used in decoys, which is great for blockchain analysis, analysis companies. But yeah, you can use it yourself as well. Then there's a new release of Haveno. They mostly updated um, dependencies. And yeah, not sure when it's coming and getting a point one release, but I think they are already pretty much advanced. They are still on the stage net, but yeah, I'm excited for Havino. And I'm also excited for Seraphis and yeah, you just had Luke Parker and yeah, on the stage and here is the, you were talking about it, yeah. They updated a new draft in version 0.3 just two weeks ago and I wish I could tell you um, what has updated, but I'm honest, I don't understand any of this. This is high, level mathematics and cryptographics i don't understand this and i'm sorry i cannot explain to you what this all means but i'm excited for seraphis and the last update for today is about the monero book uh, from cooprate so they are uh, documenting the whole monero protocol inside a book and uh, we can jump into it and have a look at uh, it's really nice to read about all the technical implementations of the protocol i mean it's also not too hard to to read i think it's um it's uh, still a work in progress but yeah i really like um that um the Monero community is going 
in the educational uh, field and they um, show things like this book. So yeah, that was the dev report for this week.